Hello everyone, and welcome to, well, I don't really know what to call this video. Uh, I think the closest I can get is, uh, hello everyone, welcome to my experience at Codemasters on F1 2016. A little bit longer, isn't it? But anyway, I, uh, as, I'm sure you, as I'm sure you saw from my previous video, I was lucky enough to get invited to test F1 2016 at Codemasters HQ in Birmingham. Uh, that was last week, this time last week as I'm recording this. Um, and uh, yeah, I just thought I'd put up a video just to kind of uh, just let you guys know sort of my thoughts on it. L luckily, they've let us give away a few details. We did have to sign a, sign a non-disclosure agreement, meaning we can't reveal too many details. Um, but yeah, so eight of us got invited uh, up to Birmingham. Uh, it was uh, me, X Mighty G, uh, Arava, or Arav, whatever you want to call him, uh, Ben Daly, Tia Met Mard, he loves, loves what I call him that, uh, TRR Limitless, uh, I think it's everyone? Yeah, that's everyone. And then there was, there was three guys from the forum as well um, who we hadn't met up until we met them. And uh, basically, we all got invited as, as kind of uh, big people in the community um, to, you know, in the hope that we'd have quite rounded opinions on the game and. and uh, yeah, so they invited us up to, to, to test the game, which is the first time they've done this in quite some time. In fact, I brought this up a couple of years ago to the old community guys, and uh, I pretty much got laughed at, actually. I, uh, I mentioned external tests, and actually slightly different. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, they weren't keen on the idea. So the fact they've done this is, 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 a, great, uh, is a great thing, definitely. And a uh, minute and a half in the video, and I've not even talked about the game. Wow, sorry about that. I'm going to ramble. I'll, I'll try and keep it under 10 minutes. We'll see. I'm still rambling. <laughs> um, so, yeah, F1 2016. So... I'll get the, the things that we can't say much about out of the way first. So there's career mode, that's back, which is awesome news. And there's safety car, that's back, which is awesome news. That's about all I can say about those two. Um, safety car, we, it wasn't even in a, much of a finished condition anyway, so there's not a lot more I could say. Um, career mode, there was a few features which I would love to reveal, but I can't. Um, just suffice it to say, I'm, I'm really excited for it and uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. Um, but we are allowed to talk about general impressions of the game and the handling of the game, which, of course, uh, is probably the, the, the main reason, the main thing that I tested while I was there. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, general impressions, we'll, we'll cover that first. So, overall, I really liked it. I like the direction they're taking with the game, um, and, and, and I really, I really enjoyed my experience there as well. I really got a feel for, the, for their passion for the game, and, and I got a... I'm quite a technical guy, and I've got a much better technical understanding of what's kind of what 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 makes the game tick, what what makes the the ego engine tick underneath, and what makes the devs tick as well. And um, and it's really really interesting for me. Um, so I've I've got a much better f a feel now, and, it, and it's you know it's the little things that seem so simple that you know like equal cars for example. It seems so simple. You think oh why can't they just fix it? And it's just not as simple as that. I won't go into too much detail, but um, there's lots of little things that I've just got a great understanding of, which hopefully will allow me to, to give better commentary going forward and hopefully um, answer some, some questions a bit better going forward as well. So, um, but yeah, anyway, so, so really enjoyed the game. I mean, I was actually surprised how much of a finished state it was in, actually. I mean, I say finished state. It's not finished, but I mean, how, how stable it is, was, is what I mean. Um, I mean, it, it, it's obviously a little way before launch. Um, I can't, I can't sort of say the window that they're aiming for for launch, but uh, it's, it's. I, I was expecting quite a few bugs, and there was a few bugs, understandably, being so early. So you know, so early. It's, it's only March. I mean, the, the, you know, we only just had the first race of the season. It's incredibly early on, but uh, but mostly it was stable. It, it ran really well, which is good to see. Um, and uh, and yeah, yeah. Overall, I really, I really liked it. Uh, I like the new direction they're taking. Can't really say much more than that for now, but hopefully, a better comment a bit more when uh, they've started. Uh, they've officially announced it. And they've started picking up some of the features so uh anyway on to the handling probably the main reason that you've come to watch this video and we're now nearly four minutes into the video so there's that um so yeah handling uh well i mean first of all the first thing that strikes you is that it's very similar to 2015 now don't switch off just yet because it, it, there's there's more to it than that but but fundamentally the handling is similar to 2015 i know a lot of you wanted to go back to the handling of 2013 but if that just doesn't work to me in this new hybrid era so uh handling is very similar to 2015 uh, there's there's a there's a few key differences. Um, first one I noticed what this was there seems to be slightly more grip at slow speed maybe, um, and definitely there seems to be le uh, rear grip I mean, and definitely there seems to be less rear grip at high speed, which is which is great to see. So it means that you know at high speed if you turn it in a bit too much or if you hit a curb or something, then you actually get a kick of oversteer in like fifth gear and it's in, and it's crazy, and you just didn't really have that too much in 2015. So that's much more realistic. Um, while we're on the subject of grip as well, the wet weather, that is massively, massively improved. I mean, previously, you'd only lose a couple of seconds, really, wouldn't you, in, on, in full wets. Um, but now you lose a lot of time. You've got to be so cautious in the wet. 
I really wish I could have recorded and showed you showed you guys some video of the wet because uh, it, it was it was really really good and really fun to drive and it's genuinely properly challenging when it's so wet it's properly properly challenging and it's really really good fun um, and and um, the figures they quoted was it's supposed to lose about 20 seconds I think I think they said it in in the full wet conditions so a big difference um, so so the wet weather is massively massively improved which is great to see um, and one of the really big things that they've improved um, is the curbs. Now, my complaint in the past has always been that, yeah, the penalty system's not great, but it's a penalty system. It's an automated penalty system. It's never going to be perfect. What we need is realistic curbs. And you know, the reason that the drivers don't cut as you do in the game in real life is because they'll damage their car. They'll damage the car or they'll spin or you know, it'll just hurt them physically going over the curbs at that speed. So that's what I've always said. I've always said, you know, we need more realistic curbs. That will stop people cutting and extending if the curbs are, curbs are realistic. And, uh, well, my dream has come true. <laughs> the, the curbs are now very realistic. In fact, almost overly realistic, if that makes sense. You have to be so cautious on the curbs now. And also off track on the grass. You have to be so cautious on that. So, you know, in the past when, you know, you ran a bit wide and you got a couple of wheels on the, on the grass, you wouldn't even care. You just keep the throttle nailed. You, you, you bring it back to the track slowly, but, you, you know, whatever. Now, if you dip a rear wheel onto the grass and keep the throttle nailed, you're going to get wheel spin and you're going to spin, which just completely changes how you play this game. You know, we've been able to drive on grass since, since 2010. Um, so suddenly to, to have so much less grip off track is great. Um, another one as well is, is there's a lot less grip generally off track. So um, that includes the tarmac runoff areas. So on the outside of, uh, of, of Puon at Spa, very fast left-hand corner. Um, usually in the past you sort of went a little bit wide there it didn't really make a difference you just kept the throttle nail you drive back on a track no no real harm done now if you run sort of a little bit wide if you get sort of two wheels the other side of the curb so fairly wide if you try and keep the throttle nailed you're going to end up in the barrier and people who know the track will know that there's a lot of runoff area there um so it, it just it just understeers it doesn't spin you out it's just it just feels like it's dusty and it just feels right you know you don't get drivers generally who run off the track and keep the throttle nailed not usually you at least have to back off and i was fine if i ran wide there i was having to literally brake and shift down two gears to get back on the track because there was so much understeer off the track so uh and that applies for the artificial grass as well um and, and the real real grass has got even less grip of course as i mentioned you can spin with it so you do have to be careful and if, if you're running wide and if you're going to touch the grass you have to back out the throttle you have to blend off the throttle um, but before you, you know, before you're able to rejoin the track, so you actually lose time if you run a little bit wide, which is great. You know, just little elements like that. It's only really small tweaks. It's probably a, you know, just just to change. I'm probably oversimplifying it as always, but it's probably just a change to to, to a number on the grass and just just say the grass grass gives say you know 40% less grip instead of 10% less grip. And uh, but it makes the world of difference to the game. It makes you play the game so differently. Um, I race I race a lot of Melbourne, and obviously the grass is quite close to, to the edge of the track a lot of times. Um, and quite a few times I, I sort of dipped into the grass and it really, really affected me. Now I've mentioned curbs. The curbs also, as I said, are much, much more realistic. Now not all the tracks had had the, the, uh, the track model updated so that the curbs were, were kind of how they wanted them. I think Melbourne was finished and as I said, I did a lot of map laps on Melbourne. And again, the curbs do make a big difference now. You've, you've, you've genuinely got to be careful. Um, it, it, it's, it just unsettles the car. You know, curbs are, they're, they're bumpy. You know, that, that's, that's what curbs are. Some more, some more so than others. And you've got to be careful when you're on the curb. You just try and nail the throttle. It's just going to unsettle the car, and and it's 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 I don't know. It's quite hard to describe, really. But again, it's just massively improved. And also, like at high speed, if you try and nail a curb, sometimes that'll unsettle the car. Um, I'll take uh, the high speed chicane at uh, Melbourne, right at the beginning of the third sector. That's a great example. Now you do still hit the curbs. I must admit, in the game, but it used to be that you literally absolutely nailed the curbs before. Now in the first part, the first part of the chicane, I was uh, hitting the curb. In the second part of the chicane, sh sh I was only sort of tapping it. I wasn't really, I wasn't nailing the curb as I used to, you know, because it just unsettled the car too much. And the same with running wide. It just forces you to stay within the track limit so much more. And uh, the corner before that as well, the, the, other, the other chicane, there's a big sausage curb on the inside of that now. So if you hit that, you do lose a lot of time. You actually got to go around the sausage curb. And that, that, that sort of stuff just hasn't been in the game before. The curb's been there. It just hasn't affected the car as much as you'd expect. So, uh... Yeah, so the curbs massively improved, and so is off track massively improved, much, much more realistic, and it changes the way you play the game so, so much. And hopefully, hopefully they they model all the tracks well enough so that you know you almost won't need the penalty system. I mean, you will on certain corners as you do in real life to stop you know people um, taking the mick, but um, but on a lot of corners you, know, you don't need the penalty system because the, the curbs are that severe that you, you don't want to touch the curbs. You want to avoid the curbs, not completely. Um, but you're not nailing the curbs as you used to all the time before.
So it's certainly a lot improved. I think that they've still got a little way to go, perhaps. But, you know, let's not forget, it's not a sim. So they're never going to make it perfectly realistic. But, um, but yeah, so, so some big, big improvements there. Um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of the handling, to be honest. As I said, overall, it is quite similar to 2015. Um, you know, the, there's a few tweaks, as I mentioned. But the biggest part is definitely the curbs and the off-track. Um... I can't even really think of anything else, to be honest with you. I, you know, I, I wish I could... There's so much more that I know, which I wish I could share with you. And, uh, and as I said, overall, the experience was just absolutely awesome. Really, I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, me, um, Matt, and um, JD went up a couple of days early and did a few nights out in Birmingham as well, which was really good fun. And um, just, I mean, we will, we will, they really appreciated our, our, our opinions as well, which is what... You know, I, I was, I wouldn't say I was worried beforehand because they invited us for a reason, but I was, you know, conscious that they might not perhaps value our opinions as much as, as much as I'd hoped they would. But they really, really did. We got there at 9 o'clock every morning and we didn't leave till about 6 o'clock every night, which is a long time to be playing a game all day long. Um, and usually, you know, we had a little debrief at the end of every day. We were supposed to finish at 5, but the debrief always went on for so long. We had so much feedback for them and we had such good conversations with them about features we wanted and about tweaks we wanted to the game and little bugs we found and all these little things and, it, and, it, and it, it, I think most of the debriefs were between well, about an hour and a half long so an hour and a half after we finished playing the game at the end of the day just talking about our experience that day talking about career mode and, and, and talking about all the things that we, we experienced and, and suggesting things for the future and, and, and bringing up points that we planned to bring up and, and it was really great and, and actually um, Lee Mather who was there who I think is one of the lead game designers now he um he actually made an interesting point that, uh, that actually the, the, the experience has been more valuable for him than he even realised it was going to be. Um, I, I think it was Lee Mather that said that. I think it was more of a general consensus really that he was giving. But that actually they expected it to be really valuable and they were really looking forward to it. But it actually was even better than they thought it was going to be. They got so much feedback and they, and they really, really enjoyed it. Um, I think he mentioned he had 117 things in his spreadsheet. That, <laughs> there were things he wanted to tweak or things he wanted to look into. Um, so lots and lots of things there. Um, they also mentioned as well that they hope this is just the start, you know, that th this is this is hopefully just the start and if it goes well and if, you know, nobody blurts out all the details and stuff, then hopefully we'll be able to do this again. Not, you know, not necessarily just us, anyone, just it will keep happening again. Um, and hopefully if they found if they found it valuable and if it positively affects the game, then why not? You know, it's, 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 I feel, I feel like it's been really positive. I, you know, I, I think the game devs did and I felt like it's, it was really, really positive. And just overall, I really, really enjoyed it. So, Hopefully that they can expand the game, expand this in the future and, and do it time and time again because I, r I really feel like, you know, on day one, actually, they, they, day one they did a little um, PowerPoint for us, a presentation, sort of showing us the new features of the game. And and at the end of that PowerPoint, I said, is this is this a new direction for you guys or is this is this not sort of thing? And, and just because, again, as I said, I was almost laughed at for, for suggesting external testing before. And... Um, and he and, and this was Lee that answered this. Lee Mather and he sort of said, "No, it's not. It's not. It's not a di not a different um, sort of direction we're taking. It's just. It's just. It's just kind of evolution." And I, I have to sort of disagree. I, I, you know, I, I feel like they've always been quite close to community. I mean, this might be completely wrong. This is what it feels like from an external point of view. I feel like in the past they've always been really close to community stuff. Um, but it really felt like they were listening, not just to us, but, you know, they've put out polls and they're just gen generally listening to their community, which is great to see, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of us are really passionate about the game and really passionate about the sport and the game and we want what's best for it. So, you know, we have got good ideas and we have got valid opinions and, and we are, you know, generally quite level-headed. So, um, you know, it, it did feel like a, a new approach for me um, on their behalf. And one thing that I did make sure I mentioned was communication. You know, at the end of one of the days, I clearly said, you know, one of the things that I, I, you know, I think you really need to improve is communication. At the minute, it just feels like you almost release a game and then kind of hide from the internet, hide from the forums. Um, but, you know, really make sure that you, you're communicating, um, you know, and make blog posts and things like the equal cars thing. You know, I, I'm not sure if I can release it, but they explained to me basically why the equal cars thing um, happens and, and why they couldn't make the cars equal, why it wasn't as easy as it seemed. And to me, that, that explanation was just so simple and, and actually made me go, yeah, okay, fair enough. Then, you know, yeah, it's still not perfect, but I, I now understand why it's not easy. So I was a lot happier about the situation. And it's those sort of things I think they should put in a blog post um, and, and just, just make them public. Just be much more communi communicative with the whole community. And I, I, think, I, think, I think they already planned to, to be honest. Um, and actually, interestingly, Paul Geel, who's another one of the top guys there, he's, I think he mainly deals with licensing. 
He, uh, he deleted his Twitter account a few years ago. And uh, literally, I think a day after the event, he recreated a Twitter account and followed all of us. So hopefully that he hasn't actually tweeted yet as far as I can see. But hopefully that's just the start um, of, of general better communication. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this was this 10-minute video is now over 15 minutes long. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you guys can appreciate that. Actually, you know, um, despite the fact I don't make many videos anymore, I am quite passionate about the game still. I'm quite still passionate about the sport. And um, it's, it, it's, it's something that hopefully is sort of reinvigorated, reinvigorated my passion uh, for the game. And I am actually already looking forward to playing F1 2016. And I think that alone speaks volumes. You know, I've only played a very early build and I'm already looking looking forward to playing F1 2016 and hopefully releasing videos. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But at the minute, I'm, I'm already excited to play it and make videos for you guys. So we'll see. We'll see where we get to. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, that's this this um, increasingly long video and increasingly rambling video. So uh, thank you to everyone who's st still listening to me ramble on. Do you put any comments uh, down in the down in the funny enough the comment section? Shock horror. Um, yeah, so, so do put some comments down below. Any questions you got, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Of course, I have to sign the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement, so I can't release more info about safety car or career. The only thing I can really talk about is, is general impressions of the game, um, perhaps my experience Mercedes with Codemasters and also the handling. Um, so put any questions about, about those things in, in the comment section. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably time for me to stop rambling on. <laughs> but anyway, yes, thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.